These are the fighting alloys. They are Brawl's unplayable characters that are rarely talked about at all. They are borderline forgotten about in the modern day discussion of Smash. On Brawl's official website, they reference these NPCs' relationship with each other, where the red alloy is the leader, the blue one is the gentle one, the yellow one has horns, and the green alloy is somehow not Kirby. Just don't think it's Kirby. This post would be a lot of people's first time seeing these characters, but they would be ultimately forgotten about in future Smash games, so stay tuned. Even though these characters have their own character slots in the game's code, they are not counted as actual fighters in the roster. I mean, why would they? Could you imagine if these weird characters were on Brawl's official roster? Hold that thought later for the video. These characters rip the standard attacks of existing fighters. In Brawl, they don't have any special moves, they have no taunts, they can't even tech attacks or pick up items that require picking up. These characters are only found in Brawl's multi-man brawl. They're an extension of Melee's wireframes and Smash 64's fighting polygon team. While the latter characters show up during the main game's story mode, brawls are even more rare, they only appear in one game mode. According to the internal data in Brawl, it's most likely that a classic mode appearance for these characters were planned at one point but was cut, as the announcer for classic mode has unused lines showing that they were planned to appear at some point in development. Fighting Alloy Team! Since these characters are essentially clones of existing fighters, here are the characters being cloned. In Smash 64, the entire roster has a fighting polygon team member, these alternate versions have different limb sizes, different model sizes, etc. While in Melee they pretty much cut all of them and whittle it down to just Zelda and Captain Falcon being the wireframes of those games. In Melee these characters are purposely weak, they have a large character model that helps them get hit easier, and since you face large groups of them during story mode it makes them easier to hit. They have rather unique combo flows considering that their moves do a small amount of damage and low knockback. They do have different combos compared to the clone characters that they're cloned from. Their movesets lack sweet spots and even particle effects that the original characters have. They have higher jumps normally, they have no special moves, slow jump squats at 7 frames, which yes, their jump squats are as bad as Bowser's. They are essentially more stripped backed versions of the original characters. If these characters were ever allowed on the official melee tier list, they probably would be worse than Bowser. That's how bad that these characters are. Their large character models, lack of complete moveset, and overall weak hitboxes would get destroyed by characters who are just leagues better than them in competitive play. The reason why I discuss the melee wireframes is because in Brawl, they are essentially continuing the legacy of the Zelda and Captain Falcon wireframes with the red and blue alloys, who are still clones of those characters, while also they add the yellow and green alloys. These versions of the characters are essentially still terrible, although they did get some interesting buffs as their jump squats are no longer 7 frames, now they are 5 frames. If you manage to hack the game and play matches with these characters, their losing animation is is pretty hilarious. What are they, taking a nap or something? And if you ever by chance use Brawl's replay mode, yes Brawl had this, good luck getting this to work correctly. If you use this with the fighting alloys with hacks during a match, your game will crash. Yeah, the sweet sound of the Nintendo Wii crashing music to my ears. Unfortunately for the fighting alloys, Brawl would be their final appearance, as in Smash 4 they were basically outclassed by the Mii Fighters, and their already small purpose for existence was probably considered an afterthought, as they didn't even show up in Smash 4 or even Smash Ultimate. Their only appearance would, if you could even count this as an appearance, would be in Smash Ultimate Spirit Mode, where you essentially are playing against the fighters that the alloys were clones of. Rest in peace the fighting alloys, you won't be missed. But wait, what if you could play as them? That's where PM Remix comes in, where where these characters are actually more fleshed out and have full movesets this time around. Although I don't think they're that amazing, they are definitely interesting nonetheless, and PM Remix has so many characters, so I guess why not? The Red Alloy. According to Brawl's trophy description, this character is the leader, which does feel consistent with his character being the Captain Falcon clone, and majority of his moveset in PM Remix is lifted from Falcon. The Blue Alloy is the Zelda clone, as many have expected to see a lot of her moveset from Zelda Returns, however this is one of the rare instances where there is brand new attacks that make the blue alloy stand out from any fighter, like her down B more specifically. The yellow alloy, this is the Mario clone. This alloy shares custom moves that existed from Mario in Smash 4, like for example the faster fireballs. This alloy
Alloy has a larger character model than Mario and in turn has much longer reach. And then here is the Kirby clone Alloy. This iteration of the character shares special moves from Kirby and Jigglypuff, even has some unique moves that are unique to just this character. Oh yeah, and he has a cool sword for some reason. These characters are largely forgotten. They require hacking or modding to play as these characters on the base version of Brawl, and they are arguably going to be forgotten as they don't even appear in future Smash games. Shoutouts to PM Remix for continuing their legacy in a way and fleshing them out. Although they are weaker compared to the rest of the cast, they are still interesting NPC characters that are deep in the game's code.